That is insane. In the event of a fire, who here thinks that you're safer sleeping with the doors open? I keep them open because I was a mom for so long. My kid's room is two doors down from mine. Always open. I'm not all that confident they would stop anything anyway. Harold, hey. Ben. Ben, nice to meet you. Harold, have a seat. Oh, Hi. Nice to meet you guys. Hello. Hello. I'm right here. Chris, how are you? Great. As you think about fire safety, what keeps you up at night? Yeah, I'm not too concerned. I probably don't think about a fire threat as much as I should, because I do forget to turn things off often. Have you ever been through one? A fire? No. We told you that you'd be coming here today for discussion, but what we didn't tell you is that there is also a demonstration that we want to show you. Sound good? I want to introduce you to Steve, the director of the UL Firefighter Safety Research Institute. I'll let Steve take it away. Welcome. My job is to lead a team of people that study how fire grows and spreads so we can keep you safe. Here at the Delaware County Emergency Services Training Center, we essentially turn this place into a laboratory. Uh, we've got several structures around here that we build to simulate where you live. And one of those structures is right here behind me. What I want you to do is I want to take you inside here and I want you to see how this looks like your home. And then once we get you outside, we're going to go ahead and recreate what would happen if there was a fire in this structure right here. Look pretty normal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah got some furnishings. You'll notice the difference down here as we walk down. This bedroom door will be closed, and the one at the end of the hall will be open. And what I want you to do is pay attention to the comparison of the two of those and think about you and your family trying to survive this fire. All right, we just hit the button, we have ignition. Oh boy, there she goes. Oh man, that is scary. It's scary, yeah, right? It's really Bang. Look, we have wow, some smoke I'm coming out over here already. Smoke's coming out. <gasps> what a lot of people don't realize is that the furnishings that are in our homes today are made of synthetic materials. So they burn so much faster than your old natural cotton-filled furnishings used to be. The statistics that we've seen through our research is in about 40 years ago, you had about 17 minutes to get out of your house after the smoke alarm sounded. Now you have less than three minutes. Holy crap, see this is what we're, this is the things that we were Whoa. Can you feel that? How can you survive that? Seriously, that is insane. All right, go ahead, knock it down. All right, as you remember, closed door on the left, open door on the right. And you can see the dramatic wow. difference between the two with the simple closed door. Impressive. We want people to be as prepared as possible and understand the importance and how little time you have and what that simple barrier can provide to you and your family should you have a fire. I want you guys to throw some hard hats on and some safety glasses and at least poke your heads in the windows or you can even walk in the hallway if you want. Give me a word or phrase to describe what you just saw. Anxiety. Frightening. Terrifying. I really didn't expect anything like this. I'll ask you one last time, in the event of a fire, are you safer sleeping with the doors open or the doors closed? Without a doubt, the door closed. Definitely with the doors closed, and from now on, the doors will be shut at night. <laughs> Definitely closed. Closed. Definitely closed. And I'm surprised by it. 
It's always great to be able to get the message out when we can take our research and get it out into the community to change behavior with the message of Close Before You Doze. It, it feels great and hopefully we can save lives. If there was one bit of advice that you could give friends or family today, what would it be? Close before you doze. 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 The key fire safety messages we want people to have are, one, have working smoke alarms in every level of your home, inside and outside every sleeping room. We want everybody to have an escape plan. Should you have a fire, you should know how to get out quickly. And if you can't get out quickly, having a closed door between you and where that fire is is critical to your survival. Watch as two teenagers dangle five stories above ground, desperately trying to escape the inferno that engulfed their apartment at the Jacob Reese houses. The fire caused by several exploding batteries on e-bikes charging overnight. This fire was caused by lithium ion batteries from an e-bike and in this apartment, there were at least seven of these e-bikes. Lithium ion batteries are known for malfunctioning, but this? Flames could be seen shooting from the window as residents attempted to escape. The intensity of this fire was such that it blew the windows out and actually blew a wall down within the apartment on top of the bed in which these teenagers were sleeping. The video shows these two teens made it out alive. They are the lucky ones. One man is dead and a woman is clinging to life. It was only because of their youth and athletic prowess and their ability to uh, climb out a window and shimmy down a pipe that this fire was not even more tragic. It's unclear whether the issue is with the battery itself or if aftermarket parts were in use. So far, the number of fires due to lithium ion batteries is more than double this year over last. And that's before the Christmas holiday, when toys and scooters that rely on these types of batteries are traditionally hot ticket items. This demonstration shows what it looks like when a lithium ion battery fails and sparks a fire often because of faulty design or overcharging. Those batteries causing more than 200 fires in New York City alone last year, injuring 147 people and killing six. And look at this battery catching fire and exploding next to a child. Start up charge in five, four. We met with researchers in Pennsylvania to see what happens when a lithium ion battery is purposely overcharged and fails starting a fire. We are here with Steve Kerber. He is with UL's Fire Safety Research Institute. So, Steve, we're actually inside of a home built to burn. We study how fire grows and spreads, and we purposely instrument it so we can figure out how to keep people safe for emerging technologies like this. Kerber and his team outfitted this 1,600-square-foot house with everything you'd find in the typical American home. Then they rigged it with cameras and an array of sensors that measure heat and gases. It's going to catch fire. It's going to release a lot of gas, and we're going to see an explosion. Researchers removed the safety features on the battery to ensure it would fail. After two hours of overcharging the scooter, smoke. 17 seconds later, the explosion buckled the windows. This is what it looked like from the inside. 12 minutes later, the living area engulfed. It was too toxic for us to get into the home after the fire, but here's what it looked like inside after Kerber ran a similar test two weeks earlier. It happened so fast, doesn't give people a lot of time to react. It's not just e-scooters and bikes. These batteries power electric vehicles. They're also used in energy storage systems to store solar energy. Hunter Claire and Justin Lopez experienced the force of a lithium ion battery fire firsthand in 2019. Originally, we thought it was a transformer fire. The Peoria, Arizona fire captains responded to a call at a facility containing thousands of lithium ion batteries used to store energy for the power grid. You needed to make sure it was safe right. for the workers to go back into this building. Exactly, so they could fix whatever the ultimate problem was. And as we went to leave at that point in time, 
it ignited, right? It blew up. I don't remember the explosion, don't remember anything from there. The force blew both men under a chain link fence. Lopez landed 30 feet away. Claire, 70 feet. Where's he at? The men nearly died. Both suffered brain trauma, broken bones, and multiple burns. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good, all things considered. You know, just happy to be alive. They're now sounding the alarm that these battery failures can be lethal. In statements to NBC News, the battery industry says failures are rare and the technology continues to be a safe and cost-effective way to provide reliable, clean energy to consumers. And they are collaborating with emergency response governmental agencies to increase awareness. To avoid this, buy batteries that are certified by a lab like UL or Intertech. Don't overcharge batteries or leave them charging unattended. If you see smoke from the battery, get out quickly and call 911. Best practices to safely live with this new technology. So, guys, the big question is where can you actually install these or charge these batteries? And I wish I had a one-size-fits-all answer yeah. for you. The, the experts say it really depends. You want to follow the manufacturer's instructions for your particular yeah. e-bike or scooter. Or if you are installing one of those energy storage systems yeah. that a lot of people do, they're connected to their solar panels. Should that go inside the garage? Should it go outside? It depends mm -hmm. on where you live. But ask those questions to make sure you're putting it in the safest and best place. Okay. And these batteries are everywhere. Yeah. They are. They really are. Thank you, Vic. Thanks, Vicky. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.